Welcome to the latest First Voice podcast brought to you by First Voice magazine, the official flagship magazine of the Federation of Small Businesses and the go-to podcast for news, tips and important information for small businesses. In this episode, we will explore FSB's immediate response to Chancellor Rishi Sunak's 2021 budget, looking at the key announcements for small businesses, exploring what those announcements mean to you and asking whether this was a good budget for small businesses. Uh, To do that, I'm pleased to say I'm joined by FSB's David Hale, who will help us unpick the budget on your behalf. David, welcome. Hi, Hayden. Good. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Look, let's start, if you don't mind, with a, a kind of rundown of the key announcements relating specifically to small businesses uh, if we can. And the first of those is, uh, you know, around business rates changes. Um, they're remaining the same, right? Small business rate relief will remain in place. Um, yes, so small business rates relief remains in place, um, but there's some important and welcome additions on top of that. So in particular, if you're in retail, um, hospitality and leisure, you will be getting a further reduction in your business rates of of 50% over the next, um, over the next period. And that's, you know, that, that is welcome. There's, there's lots of things which I'm, I'm sure we'll come on to that, you know, would have been welcome to see in this budget, but that is, that is welcome. It could go further, um, especially for people who supply to those sectors or there's a lot of other businesses that are, that are under pressure, um, but that is that is welcome. And yes, there's, there's there's been no kind of clawback on 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 anything else. Um, it, it's it's just positive from where we are now on business rates. Um, it's it's just about whether or not your your business will benefit. Yeah, great. Okay, and and there were other um, sort of more specific and niche announcements around business rates as as well. I think. Can you share a little bit of that for the audience? Yeah, so there's two separate things, um, both of which are, are welcome and are, are things we've talked about. So one, um, as you may know, the, the, as soon as you put things like solar panels on your, on your business, they become rateable. That is not good. There's lots of people, lots of, lots of our members that have said that they, you know, they would like to do that and they can't because of the rate system. Um, we've made that case. It's one of the main things that we say, especially when government comes to us and asks, uh, you know, sometimes asks in, in not a good way, in not a good way, while you know business is doing more to meet net zero. Uh, and one, they are two businesses have a lot else to do, and three, the government is getting in the way with things like the rate system. So, you know, that is something we've asked for, and I think it's good that the government's acted on that on net zero. The other thing um, that they've done, which is also something we've talked to them about a lot, is that when you make a new capital purchase of whatever it is, so if you're, you know, from putting in another, a new production line to uh, simple things like, Small changes to your building to, 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 to improve it for, for you and your, your staff. Um, at the moment, that adds to your rates liability. Now, they haven't gone on this second part as far as they've gone on the sustainability net zero side, because what they're saying is that for the first year, um, it won't add to your, to your rates bill because, because of the way business rates works. That's not. That's not huge, but it's it's a really good start, I think, from from where we've been for for, for government to to actually accept the case that the fact that making new installations or buying new equipment is adding to rates, and that's a problem. I think it's a good start. They've accepted that there's the first year discount for kind of capital um, um, machine, yeah, for plant and machinery generally. Um, and and then on net zero, net zero, they've gone they've gone the whole way, and that's that's welcome on that. So yeah, some some definite positives, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say these were 
the whole the whole hog that they need to do on business rates by by any means. Yeah, I was going to come to that. Um, it sounds like these are some good things, some of which may even have a you know a, a, a big and fairly instant impact on some small businesses. But you know, as you alluded to, their small businesses are have been through a, a very turbulent period, and while some of these might be a good thing from the from the starting point of where we are today, um, you'd like you'd like to have seen the government go further, would you? Yes, I mean, I think I think in the last eighteen, you know, the last eighteen months have been horrible for well, they've been horrible for lots of people, but they've been horrible for lot, lots of people who are trying to run businesses. The origin of some of these things stems from before the last election. So we do a lot of work with the political parties on their sort of mm-hmm. manifestos and uh, things like the the original high streets discount were things that we talked quite a lot to the Conservative Party before the last election to kind of get these problems addressed in in their manifesto. But that was pre-COVID. So, you know, they've obviously gone a lot further since since then to some degree. But really, businesses have had a terrible 18 months. The whole problem with business rates is you have to pay it whether or not you're making a profit. Um, does it go? Does it go far enough? It doesn't go. Certainly doesn't go as far as I would. I would like. But then you know there is. Yeah, it goes a lot further than 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 they might have done. Yeah, <laughs> and and than they would have done otherwise if if people didn't didn't push them in this direction. So hopefully, you know, hopefully we, we made a lot of progress. I would say on on rates. Yeah, fair enough. Um, that's you know business rates and that's a big issue were there other announcements for small businesses uh, and other uh, other things affecting small businesses yes there was a lot so how the sort of formal process for budgets and spending review works is is we do this big sort of formal submission i think as had i was over 60 i want to say 63 but over you know 60 60 different items and they're all all things that we think are good ideas that the government might do um or might consider or that we might be able to persuade them to do so there was there was quite a lot actually um because of the way these things work you know some of them not going to apply to everyone they're quite small but some of them are good um other things just come from from general Conversations and what we do with different different departments across government and the, the treasury in particular, but yeah, I mean a few things. So one is a, is a nice reform to R and D tax credits to help with kind of on the on the digital side. So data and cloud computing, you can now be able to get get R and D tax credits um, connected to that. They obviously <laughs> talked to an accountant about the the details. There's some good. There's some good programs that they've been doing through the British Business Bank, um, similar to the sort of Northern Powerhouse Fund, uh, and a different, slightly different one called the Regional Angels Fund that's that's helping in the in places like the, the Northeast to get more investment into businesses that they're going to expand, which I think is helpful and positive. Um, loans are no one's favourite thing by any means. Um, I'm not. <laughs> Um, you know, so I'm not saying this is great, but there's a, they're, they're extending for a moment some of the loan guarantees, yeah. uh, the loan guarantee, and that's you know that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing that it is in place. Um, I think I think on the on the pubs and on the the draft relief, um, you know, we've seen some. That's actually some really positive change. Hopefully, uh, always say on budget day we'll go through all the detail um, because we we will. But I think there's some. Um, some positive changes there. I think also on um, things like skills, I think we're actually a bit we're a bit more positive than we we have been in terms of what uh, we have been on on other occasions about what's what's being announced because it seems like there is an understanding more of what it is that small firms would be looking for from the government on skills. So, you know, not kind of skills courses that take years and make, yeah, make it so that 
that that people aren't coming out with anything that's sort of job relevant. But I think we are seeing sort of shorter, more specific skills courses where some of the some of the early the early pilots that they've been doing have definitely been better used by small businesses than than kind of past um, programs. And there's also some welcome things on adult education to to you know in terms of if if people you might employ or or, or just people in general might might struggle with their maths. Um, you know, this is as an adult, not not in terms of, of kids, um, getting getting their maths up to speed, being helpful. I think a lot of people are struggling a little bit with, well, a lot of people are struggling with shortages and various things going on now. I think things on adult education often welcome some good things on regional transport, backing some of this sort of intracity transport. This this idea, which is a hundred percent right, that London has, you know this amazing public transport centre and then you go somewhere like Birmingham and it, you, know, you can basically get a bus into the city centre and a bus out from the city centre somewhere yeah. else and that's not, you know, that that's not good at all. So so there, there was there was quite a bit um, in there that was, you know, that was fairly positive. But again, all of these things are kind of smallish positive decisions that, you know, might add up well or, or, or might miss your business out. It kind of depends what your business is. Yeah, understood, and 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 lots of things you talk about there that that hopefully will, will will have fairly quick impact on on small businesses. Things you talked about there around, you know, uh, shorter training programs that actually you know produce skills quickly for for small business uh, employees rather than these sort of things that run for a, for a long period of time. So you don't see a relatively quick impact on businesses. I think those things are good. Um, of course, we also saw this announcement this week around the rise in the, the minimum wage, uh, and that's come hot on the heels of the national insurance rise that, that we talked about earlier in the year. Um, th- th- these things will also have impact on small businesses, won't they? They have huge impacts. Um, and this is, yeah, I think this this is like the the big frustration at what we've seen today. So we talk to government a lot, a lot about the impact that what they've what they've done on on the tax side and on the the, the employers side of the tax in particular, um, as 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 and 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 what impact that will have on on jobs on hours on ability to pay people good wages and then obviously on the kind of self-employment on the and then the dividend side as well what we've what we've seen already is a real impact of fewer people considering being self-employed and that there's a real negative to that what we've what we've had today is is not the action that we think is necessary to alleviate that so We've talked a lot about increasing the employment allowance, which is the first part that you get off your employer's national insurance. So um, it used to be a lot less. Now it's 4,000. That was, you know, talking earlier about when we worked to get stuff in manifestos ahead of elections, that was in the Conservatives manifesto. And it was, yeah, you know, but based off what the work we did with them and then it was delivered on there the budget in March 2019, that that's really important. But what we need to see is that extended from, you know, we've said from 4,000 to 5,000, we'd love it to be extended more than that. I think we absolutely still need to see that. Now, what we would assess is that government in the way that government often acts doesn't like to move until it can see a problem. So at the moment, it's not sure how bad the winter it will will be. It's not sure how much it needs to alleviate um, the kind of the the real impact that these tax hikes will have on on wages. And I... You know, I, and I find that I always find that incredibly frustrating because, you know, we should be able to, and we are able to, to kind of predict predict these things and what we need to do. The bright the bright spot, of course, is that the government 
has another fiscal statement, another, another, another budget, if if you will, in in March, and that's before all these tax 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 rises yeah. actually come in. So you know, we we don't uh, we don't not get what we're aiming for once and then and then leave it. There's lots of different ways to approach this. They will have more of the data so they can see more of the impact um, by then, and we'll we will see where we get to. But, you know, if you were to ask me now, what's your starting point for next time? This would definitely be one of them. And you're absolutely right on the, on the, to, to bring the, the living wage in alongside the tax hikes because they add on each other. The last thing you want is, you know, if you, if you're having to put people's wages up, but you take their hours down, that's not ideal. What we've always said, is so much of the money that goes to that goes to that worker just goes straight to the straight to the treasury. Right. We're not always convinced they they spend it that well. Actually, using it to sort of alleviate some of the employment cost pressures on on small businesses would help enormously. Um, and we'll keep making that case. Um, you know, I think the the government has a an independent office of budget responsibility, which is. Um, talk today about having a more positive view of employment going forward and that that can influence kind of how they take decisions um quite a lot because they get this official advice that yeah if you like that everything is rosy in the economy now everything isn't rosy in the economy everybody should know that um but that's the sort of kind of institution that i think you're you're pushing against from our perspective so we will see how things go and we will we will push on that well um, that, 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 that's a nice segue i think david into you know what what will fsb be doing from here you know you you, you mentioned that we've got that um that early 2022 budget um it isn't that far away is it really um so you guys will continue lobbying i assume um what what, what will that activity look like in the coming months and, and, and what might it focus on? Oh, yeah. So, so we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll continue on everything. There's, there's kind of there's two separate aspects. There's one, so departments got their sort of spending allocations today. So there's, there's one right now. How are they going to spend that money that they've just had confirmed today? So that's sort of things like how those skills programs work and, and how kind of transport stuff is delivered in practice. Um, so, you know, we'll be talking to departments, um, ministers, and, you know, their advisors uh, uh, across government and also with kind of MPs, with other, other people kind of constantly on, on, on that front. And then the, the budget aspect, which is where some of these tax questions come in, that kind of works on a cycle. So, so, um, between sort of now and Christmas, if you like, that's the sort of gathering evidence, et cetera, um, process. That's that's where you know you might see some of these uh, counter uh, counter views to to the OVR kind of be be better evidenced um, in the next couple of months. Um, and then it, it there are conversations that happen about that with kind of. Um, officials in government and again advisors ministers etc and then that sort of formalizes into a into a particular process on the one side with kind of submissions etc and then like obviously everything we say in the press everything we say privately uh those kind of conversations where we can just sort of bring out what members are experiencing and make that real to people who, who you know people who sit at the, the top of government departments get information in particular ways and with particular standpoints. And uh, our worry is constantly that, aside from us, there's, there's no one pushing on the small business side. So we will just make sure we do that. Um, and it, governments make loads of small decisions every day and they make a few big decisions fairly regularly that have, that have massive effects on, on people's lives so you know we just we just plan ahead to those and and how we can we can make sure that the small business voice is heard 
Brilliant. Dave, that's really fantastic. And, and, and thank you so much for, for helping us pick through uh, the 2021 budget um, and focusing on the, the, the key aspects for, for small businesses. I'm really grateful. Thank you for, for joining us. Thank you also to our audience for listening in. Uh, while I have your attention, I'd like to just remind you that you can subscribe to the First Voice podcast to receive regular updates and guidance on the big issues affecting small businesses. Uh, And do please also remember that you can find a whole host of additional webinars, podcasts, and other content on the First Voice website at firstvoice.fsb.org.uk. Many thanks for joining. 